Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm the Hammer and I'm glad you're back. Today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys what I feel is the best setup for a D819 RS. I've been working on this setup for a while now, testing a lot of stuff, and I have what I feel is the perfect setup for this car. Now this setup is not necessarily for the superhuman pros. They don't count. They, they can drive anything. They can probably make it set up totally different and go faster because they're superhuman they're not like us so this setup will work for everybody even an average racer um, even an old guy like myself can drive it fast without mistakes now I do make mistakes obviously just like anybody else but I feel like it's super fast it turns like crazy and it's still easy to drive at the same time something like I've never felt driving any other car I feel like this car, I can do anything with it. It's crazy how fast it is and crazy how easy it is to drive at the same time. I don't change much. I take it pretty much everywhere and it works. I change shock oil with the temperature and that's pretty much it. Maybe a tire, uh, maybe a minor adjustment here or there. I hardly ever have to change anything on it besides that. So that being said, I I'm gonna go over everything as best as I can, as much detail as I can, I'm going to tell you what I change, what I don't change, um, and why I do what I do, and here we go. Okay, folks, here you have it. The HB Racing D819 RS, what I feel is the baddest RC car ever made. This car drives, handles better, easier to drive than anything I've ever driven. So today, I'm going to go over it and show you how I've got mine set up and what I feel is the best setup for a normal racer like myself. If anybody can drive this car fast, it turns like crazy and easy to drive. I can't describe to you how good it is. So first off, start off with the J-Concept S15 body. And then I'm going to talk, next I'm going to talk about the diffs. For the diffs, I've tried pretty much every combination possible and landed, finally landed on seven, five, and two. Every time I've strayed away from that, I always put it back. It always works everywhere. Every track I've ever been to, every kind of track condition works great. I don't ever have to change it. Um, it just works. So that being said, seven, five, two. Center diff, the gears I use are the .8 mod gears from HB Racing. I have a 60 tooth spur, 16 tooth pinion. Over the 1.0 gears, this makes the initial hit much smoother and again makes the car even more easy to drive. I've tried going back and forth. There was times where I either wore out a, spur, a, a clutch bell or whatever and put the 1.0s and I didn't like it. I always go back to the 0.8. So now I'm stocked up on those. So 60 16 on that. While I'm talking about the center, I'll talk about the center chassis brace. Up under the center diff on the HB cars, it comes with an aluminum brace with two nuts and bolts to hold it in place. This stiffens the chassis, makes the car more aggressive. So I've tried this over and over. I always go back. It also The kit also comes with a plastic one that used to come on the 817. If you run the plastic one, the chassis has more flex and way more grip. With this setup, the way I run it, I like the plastic one better. I've recently, within the last couple of weeks, have tried going with aluminum. I had it in at SIC, first race, the first thing I did was take it out, didn't like it. You can leave the aluminum in there, if it's too aggressive, then it doesn't have quite enough grip, you can take the bolts out and leave it loose. That's what it says on the setup sheet. That does help, it's kind of a tuning option, but I feel the plastic, plastic works much better in almost all conditions. So. That's pretty much my go-to. I'm probably never going, hardly ever going to change that again. Um, while I'm looking here, I'll tell you about this. This is a brace, a heat shield that I made for the radio tray. All the electronics are right there next to the engine. This is an old trick from the RB car I had back in the day. They had one as an option. Uh, nobody made one, so I just took a piece of carbon, cut my own. It's nut, a nut and bolt. Actually. It's just a screw threaded into there with a little shim under it into the rear brace. 
that stiffens the rear brace a little bit. You know, drivability doesn't really change that much, but it does shield heat from the radio a good bit. And uh, that's worked out really good. I haven't had any problems with that. So um, Next, I guess I'll talk about my radio tray and the servos and stuff I use. My battery is a Protec LIHB battery made for HB cars, TLR, and so on. Uh, that's been great. Um, servos, I use, I run SRT servos. Mine are the older model 927Rs. I'm probably fixing to change those. I've had those in there a few years now. I'm, the new one is, uh, I think, a 927S. I'm just going to get another set of those, just the new updated version of those. Um, I'll keep talking about the center while I'm here. Uh, the brakes, brake bias. Brake bias, for me, pretty much 50 50 everywhere. Um, you can dial in a little more rear brake or a little more front brake to adjust the car. I like it 50 50 almost everywhere. I hardly ever change that. Um, on the servo tray, I use the 6 mic aluminum brace. Uh, I've used that one and the carbon. Actually, right now, this one, there, there's a tiny spot right here where it's really thin. I've broken that on this one as it's currently broke, but still works. It still stiffens the tray pretty good. I've used the carbon ones too and ended up breaking those because they're awful thin right there. So that's something that you're going to have every now and then. But for right now, the, the aluminum, even with a little break in it right there, is still working good. So I will probably upgrade that soon. Uh, on the servo, the arm going to the servo, I've got three shims under there. Just try to straighten that out as much as possible. Nothing, not too big a deal. Um, so next, I guess we'll talk about the arms. The, as far as the arms go, I like the hard ones, but only in the summer. In the winter, they're a little hard and they'll break if you hit something just right. So in the winter, like it is now, I run the soft arms. In the front, I use the plastic inserts and super glue them in before I screw them in. The rear, I run the carbon inserts, always not glued. And same thing, soft arms in the winter, hard arms in the summer. Definitely makes a difference. Um, so back to the front, I use the stock steering plates. I don't even remember what number they are. They're the number five plates. So the front and rear plates are the stock ones. The, the rear ones here, the carbon. They're number five dot and five dot in the front as well. I've, I've, I haven't really changed that with the steering knuckle that goes in the middle hole on the outer link I've got two one millimeter shims on the inner link I've got two one millimeter shims um, front hubs I use a 20 degree caster blocks 20 degree calms the car down a little bit the 17 and a half with everything else on this car combined it's important that this is a product of everything else done to the car. When I run the 17 and a half, it's too aggressive. 20's perfect. Now, generally speaking, you would add an extra shim to the outside when you change to the 20 because the back kicks down a little more, so you make up. And I've tried that. Uh, I did like, I can't remember exactly the feel of what it was, but I went back to two front, two on the inside and outside. That's the way it worked out the best, so I've left it that way. Um, on the camber links, camber links are all the way out on the sea hub. Um, the inner links, inner camber links, they're all the way down on the bottom position. <clears throat> Might as well talk about the shock position while I'm here. Shock position is in the third hole on the top outside on the bottom pretty simple um, the front I guess hub height adjusters I think those are two millimeter front top and bottom it's, it's right in the middle I played around with that a little bit uh, and I didn't notice a huge change wound up going with the stock pieces top and bottom okay let's see moving on um, the A block, the A block 
I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can't see. Because I've got the I've got the D racing skid plates, by the way, front and rear. Some people don't like them. For me, the chassis are expensive. These cars rub the the B C and uh, the B and D plates pretty bad. So this tends to help out a lot. The front is just like a bumper with a, a skid plate attached to it. So that didn't really affect anything else. The rear, yeah, it probably scrubs a little bit, but for me it's worth it. It's gonna save your chassis a little bit. And that's really the only reason why I do it. Th this car is about a year old and the chassis the chassis is getting a little wear on it, but it's doing pretty good. Alright, so back to the A blocks. A block is a stock one, of course, because you have the inserts. I run it with two dots up. Okay, the B block is the plus 2.8 B block. That's pretty important to the setup. That takes a little kick up away from it. Uh, helps the car turn a little more. Okay, <clears throat> while I'm talking about the, the plates, we'll go ahead and talk about the C and D plates. Um, the C plates are the minus one degree camber. They're the wide ones. So this takes away one degree, I'm not, I'm not, sorry, not camber, but toe. That takes away a degree of toe. And then the D blocks are 2.75. So that gives you 1.75 rear toe. This is one of the key pieces. These two pieces are one of the key pieces in the car. Uh, that really makes the car turn. Um, one of the best mods I ever did. That combined with the 2.8 B block together worked really good. <clears throat> The C plates, the C peels in the C plate are one up for the, this is for the anti-squat. The rear are two up. All these things I'm talking about, I've tested extensively, and this is the combo that I feel works the best. All these are, I've tested one thing at a time. Okay, so the rear hubs, <clears throat> like I said, I use the five dot plates in the center hole. The rear hub is spaced forward two millimeter with the shims and I use uh, one dot down one dot down on the insert with the arrow pointing out so it's at its widest position. I just did a video testing that and that's where I've always left it and that seems to be the best for this car so that's where I'm leaving. Um, so next I will talk about the, the camera links. The camera links, the outer one's in the center. The inner one is the second hole up from the bottom. Uh, shock positions are pretty much are pretty much the same as the front. Uh, hole, again, hole number three and the outer hole on the bottom. Okay, one thing I forgot was the sway bars. Sway bars are pretty important for the setup too. I've got 2.2 in the front, and I set them up where it's got just barely got any slop in it. So, and then at the end of it is pretty much flush with the the ball end on there. The rear sway bar is 2.5 millimeter. Same deal. Leave it where it's just got some play in it, and you're good to go. So, the rear wing. So one thing I like, I use the I use HB wing. It's great wing. A bunch of people seem to like it. it. It's very durable, very good downforce. And I do the three holes in each section. Um, I haven't really tested anything back to back. I've just always done that, and it works, so I leave it. The holes drilled in the top are in the most farthest back hole, so. The wing is as far forward as it can go. And as far as the mounting position on the wing, I do it all the way up. Uh, that should give you hopefully max downforce and it looks really cool. <laughs> so that's what I do. So uh, next thing, I guess on the front, I should have mentioned the shims for the, for the arms. There's no shim in the back, two millimeter shim in the front. Then on the back, I've got, I guess it's two two millimeter shims in the back, none in the front. Move the front far, far forward as possible. Move the hub far forward as possible. 
Um, I guess I'll talk about the engine. Uh, Ultimate Engines is a new sponsor of mine. This is new to me is the M3X 2.0 with the 2141 pipe. This thing is fantastic. Super powerful, super good response. Runtime is incredible. I couldn't ask for much more. Uh, very impressed with that engine. Um, can't wait to to try the five port. Uh, maybe in a truggy sometime. We'll see. Okay, so what else am I missing? So we'll talk about the shocks. The shocks. I did a bunch of testing on the shocks. Um, I played around with it. I with oils. I played around with pistons. I found that the pistons are best if they're one five by one point five in the front, five by one point six in the rear. With the stock pistons, I think you have to drill out one or the other to get that combo. But that seems to work everywhere, no matter whether I'm running emulsion, bladders, or what. Uh, it just works great. For the most part, I run emulsion almost everywhere. Here at the warehouse, it's pretty somewhat smooth track. The honeycomb, the Performa honeycomb bladders work really good. Um, when the track gets bumpy, like at SIC, I had them on there. I changed back to the emulsions, and it was night and day difference in drivability. The car just absorbed the bumps and didn't crash near as much. As far as fluid goes, in the summer, also this summer I ran 60-40. Um, the winter, when it's cold, let's say at SIC it was... 35 30 degrees and this car was the best it's ever been anywhere i had 45 and 35 so right now the track was 50 degrees the other day i landed i stopped on 50 and 40. This, these oils are a little higher than normal maybe for some people but that's what works for me works for this combo the shocks the springs are yellow in the front blue in the rear that's a popular combination for most of the HB guys, uh, it just works. Um, I, I, hard, I don't ever change them. I, I don't ever change the pistons. I don't ever change the springs. I'll change from bladder to emulsions sometimes, but it's for the most part, it's emulsions everywhere. On my e-buggy, the setup is almost the same. I like the bladders or the honeycombs a little better in that. So, what else can I talk about? The... The ride height. Ride height is. I'm drawing a blank. 27, 27 in the rear, 25 in the front. Almost everywhere. Uh, hardly ever change. It's something else I hardly ever change. And for droop, if you look back at my one of my past videos, you see I had to hit set the droop with the axle height. The the pretty much everywhere I go as well. The front is one millimeter above the chassis. The rear is three millimeters below the chassis. The outer hubs are the narrow hubs that come with the kit. I tested those. I did another video testing the wide hubs versus I, Maybe I didn't do a video. <laughs> I did do some testing wide versus narrow. On this car, the narrow seems to have much more grip. I did back-to-back -back testing, and for whatever reason, the wide ones seemed to be looser. This was here at the warehouse on a semi-dry night uh, or maybe it was during the day, I don't remember, but I do know the narrow hub I did like better, so I've stuck with that and kept it there all the time. So I don't know what else that I'm leaving out here. Um, that's pretty much it. So I, I think I've covered the bases. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask setup. I'll, if you want me to share a setup, I do have the so dialed app. I'll share it with anybody. Anybody wants to see it, I want you to. I want everybody to feel how awesome this car is. Um, I think it's by far the best one I've ever driven. I just want everybody to, to be able to enjoy it as well. So that's it for this time. Um, Hope you enjoyed. Have any questions? Any setup questions that I can help you with? I'll do my best to answer it uh, and let you know what I feel. And I will be glad. Again, I'll be glad to share you my setup uh, via the dial app. So dial app. So if you hadn't tried the so dial app, please do. It's incredible. And 
do me a favor by liking and subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell and you'll get updated on new videos. See ya.